Welcome back to Sunday School. The Great Commission. What is it? They are talking about it in church, and we ought to learn about it. So let me set the scene. We're going to use some cold, hard cash this quarter to represent Jesus. He's cold, he's hard, he's dead, because they've just crucified him. So they nailed him to a cross, so we're going to put a big N on the face to symbolize the nail holes. And they also speared him in the side. So on the other side, we're going to put an S. So we have a big S on his side where the spear went in. And we have a big N for all the nail holes they put into him. But not only did they kill him, they put him in a rocky tomb, sort of a cave, built into a cliff. And then they rolled a big rock in front of it and put guards around it. Now, I want you at home to guard it also. I want you to watch it to be sure he's in there. Nobody's taking it out. Okay, so he's in there and he's locked. But let's, he's dead and buried. Let's now talk about the disciples. The disciples, ah, the disciples were scared. They just saw their leader crucified. And so everybody, from Peter to Andrew to James, John, and uh, Philip, they were frightened that the Jews would come and get them also and crucify them. And there were 11 disciples shaking in their shoes. Eleven disciples. Why do I say that? Because Judas had already killed himself out of shame for what he did to Jesus. So they were all hiding, but one was hiding by himself. And the other ten were all hiding together. Now, who was the one that was hiding by himself? Do you want a hint? The hint is... It was Thomas, also called Didymus. Now, we're going to talk about Thomas a little bit later on. So we're going to say, Thomas, we want you to sort of stay right there. Stay, Thomas. Good. Okay, so Thomas is hiding by himself. The other ten are in a safe house. That safe house was under lock and key. It had locks on it, and they figured they were safe, safe there. And so... When you look at where they were hiding, if you were to open the door, there would be another door, and it would be locked also. And going in, in further, each door was locked, trying to keep the Jews away. They were hiding for their life. And so they weren't there. And you kept looking for, uh, for them, and they wouldn't be there because there are more locked doors. And they, the disciples thought that they were very safe being in this locked room in the inside of a locked house. And the, imagine their surprise when all of a sudden, who in their midst should appear? But Jesus. Jesus showed up. And he was there. And the disciples were immediately terrified. They were scared. They thought they saw a ghost. Or they thought that maybe somebody had found them and they were going to be given to the Jews. But then Jesus said, peace be with you. And he showed them the nail holes that were in his hand. And the spear hole that was in his side. And he sat and he talked with them. And they were immediately happy, happy disciples that now their leader was back with them, their rabbi. And who could deny anybody who'd come back from the dead? Wait, how did he come back? Weren't you watching the tomb? How did he get out of the tomb? The guards are there, but... 
It sounds empty. He is risen. He is risen indeed. The tomb is empty. And then Jesus gave them the great job, the great responsibility. The, we call it the great commission. He said, you do as I do. Preach, teach, tell people about the love of God, heal them. But why did he say this? Why did he say, uh, why did he tell them to do as I do? Well, let's play a game to sort of show why. Because I've got a card deck, and I want you to do as I do. Because I've got a card deck for you too. Now, I'm going to take my card deck, and I'm going to shuffle it till I'm happy. I'm happy. And you do as I do. I'm, I'll shuffle for you, and you tell me when you're happy. Okay? I've shuffled for, for you. Yeah, not happy yet. We'll do it again. Okay. Shuffling again. Ha, do it again. I'll do it again. Okay. One more time. Okay. If, as long as you're happy. Got it. Okay, good. Shake your head. Okay, good. So, we've each shuffled our deck, and I'm going to open my deck, and I'm going to find a card, just any card in there that I want. And I'll take this card, and I'll just set it to one side. And I'll close up my uh, deck and lay it down. You, well, you find any card that you want. And so, is there any card, card in there you like? Uh, stop here, do you want to go further? Uh, st okay, do you want to have... This card, or do you want this one? You want that one? Okay, I'll lay it, but you need to write it down. Write it down because I don't know what it is. So you you got that? You write that down? We'll lay it down there, and we'll put the cards together, straighten them up, and set, set them down. Now, you do as I do. I'm going to take half of my deck, I'm going to lay it down, and we put the chosen card on it and put the rest of the cards on that. You do as I do. You take the top half of the cards, put your chosen card on it, and then put the rest of the cards on that. Now, I'm going to give you my deck and you give me yours. Okay, I'm going to find my card in your deck. This is the card, ah, that makes me, that's, that's the one that I had chosen for, for my deck. And we set this down. And you find the card that you had in your deck. Now, oh, you wrote yours down. You wrote yours down, so I'll t tell you what. I'll just set your cards down, and I'll tell you what I got, and you compare it with the, the notes that you made. So, mine was the Queen of Hearts. Yours was the Queen of Hearts? Fabulous! You do as I do, and we got the same result. That's why Jesus wanted the disciples to do as he did, to get followers, to have more people know the love of God, and they did, and they got more followers, and that's why we're God Christians now. Okay, and then Jesus did something unusual. He breathed on them. He breathed on them. Now, at this time, we're not allowed to breathe on each other during the plague. So I put my breath in a balloon. But when Jesus breathed on them, Something happened, something miraculous. Jesus breathed on them, and the Holy Spirit was in his breath. And he said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. And they received it. They got his breath, and they got the Holy Spirit, and they were overjoyed. And they wanted to thank Jesus, 
They remembered the nail holes and the things they had. They had him firmly in hand because now they could follow somebody that had risen from the dead and they were so fat. It was so fabulous. They didn't quite know what to do. So they, well, they wanted to tell everybody, but Jesus had disappeared right in their midst. In all those locked rooms, the rooms were still locked. And he was gone. But the disciples were excited. And when they saw Thomas, they told him, Jesus, Jesus is risen. We saw him. He's alive, back from the dead. And Thomas was a skeptic. Thomas didn't believe things that he didn't see. And he said, Jesus, I saw him killed, speared, nailed. I won't believe it till I see the holes in his hand or into his side and put my fingers in them to be sure. Are you really Jesus? Now, when you don't believe anything except the things you see, that's called being a skeptic. And that's what our doubting Thomas was. But if somebody tells you something and you believe it's true, that's a belief. For example, we were just playing with cards, and I've got a card deck here. I've got cards here that all of them are different, just like before, but these are even more different. These don't have any of the uh, numbers or faces on them. They have letters. Do you believe it, or are you skeptical? We have a card here that I know what it is because I can see it. You can't see it, but do you believe that it has a letter on it instead of like all the other cards? Well, that's, that's, what, that's what it's like to be skeptical. Now, the disciples got together with Thomas and they went into another safe house. They went into a safe house that they thought was even safer than before. This safe house, well, it was a big house. It was something that they figured that they could roam in and be pretty safe and think nobody, Jew, none of the Jews could find him because Jesus wasn't with them anymore. It had been a week since he had uh, appeared to, to, uh, with them. And so they were hiding again because if the Jews found them, they'd never believe it, and they would crucify them all. And so, the, so they, they were hiding in there. And if you were to go in, there would be a locked room. And then there would be another locked room. And there was a big house, and every room was locked. And inside one room was another room, which was locked. Another room, another room. And they were all locked. And the Jews would have to get through a whole lot of locked doors, and they figured they would never be captured and nobody could ever find them because this was a safe house that had so many locks and doors on it that nobody could get in. And so they were in there with Thomas. And Thomas, well, he was glad that everything was locked up tight. But then in the midst of them again, Jesus appeared. Jesus. And he went straight to Thomas and he said, Thomas, put your fingers in my nail holes. Put your hand into my side where the spear went in. And Thomas saw Jesus and he believed. He said, my Lord, my God. And Jesus said, you believe because you see. 
you believe because you see, how much more blessed are people who don't see, who see nothing, and yet they believe. And peace be with you, Thomas. And Thomas received Jesus' peace as we should all receive his peace. And you remind me that Jesus said, peace be unto you. And we will have Reese's Pieces together. See you at church later. Bye-bye.